I'm content creator Mary Barnett, also known as Mobile Mary. I'm the founder of Another Brilliant Idea, and I'm dedicated to helping women entrepreneurs grow their business with digital marketing and communication tools, tips, and resources that empower them to be bold and stand in their brilliance on my globally recognized show, Brilliant Marketing with Mary. Hey, everybody. I'm so excited that you're here back again with the Brilliant Mobile Mary Marketing Show. Nope, that wasn't it. <laughs> it is a Brilliant Marketing with Mary show live. <laughs> hey, I'm so excited that you're here today because would you like to grow your business into a multi six to seven figure with a very small team? Right? Less overhead, less work, more profits, Fantastic. I am so excited to share my guest with you. She's actually a, a dear friend. I won't say an old friend, right? Because we're not old. We're just dear friends. And I we've been in the trenches together for years. And I'm so honored that she actually had time for me today because she's super busy, super famous. I mean, not busy in a bad way, busy making, you know, millions of dollars. And she's going to help us learn how to do that as well today. So I've got some amazing questions for this amazing woman. Um, and her beautiful name is Ursula Menjes. And she is, I'm going to share a little bit about her. Again, this is the title of the show, but I just thought there might be one person in the universe who doesn't know who she is. So I thought I would read a little bag before embarrassing her and putting this on screen. Um, I'm going to read a little bit about her bio because again, I have watched her catapult into um, amazing heights. And she is so generous to be able to share her uh, her journey and um, how she does it. So she, Ursula Menjes, is a leading expert on success and business growth and a USA Today bestselling author of Up, Up Level Now, which again, brand new book, super excited to learn about it, plus five other nonfiction books. No big deal, right? She is a business strategist and coaches, coach who works with entrepreneurs to double their monthly revenue in as little as 30 days while working less. Love that. She's also a keynote speaker and he's certified as an NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming Coach through the NLP Institute of California and helps her clients release the limiting beliefs and blocks that hold them back from their greatest success. She has actually been my coach before. She's a genius. Magical. Love it. Did you know that you can change a limiting belief in as little as three simple steps? It is easy to stay stuck in our comfort zone, but that will never allow us to reach the goals we truly desire. So we're going to learn how to break through to the next level with this entertaining expert. Without further ado, let me bring up my dear friend, Ursula Menjez. Yay! <laughs> Mary Barnett, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for not calling me old. I love that. We are dear, dear friends. And I'm excited to hang out with you anytime and um, also to connect with your audience today. So I'm excited to see where this is going to go. That's awesome. Well, I put up your cute little title here. Cute little title. What is that? <laughs> you know, but I use the word cute little a lot. And I am you know, I need to probably stop that. My husband says that I shouldn't say that to men. Because I'm always like, oh, that's so. And he goes, they do not like that. Do not tell them they're cute and little. No, no, no. I'm like, whatever. I don't know that I want to be the opposite of that. So I'll take cute and little today. That sounds great. I love that. Like, not that there has to be an opposite, right? It's this or that. No, no. Yeah. So, well, let's get into it because seriously, I have so many questions. I didn't even know what a terrible friend that you just wrote a new book. So tell me, what is yeah. the new book up level now? Yeah. So here's the thing. I didn't just, we'll just say it, it came out about a year ago. Look at, I have it. I have it with me. Uh, and it's great product placement. <laughs> right? Someone said that to me once, put it by your face and I believed her. So, um, you know, what was interesting is I wrote up a level now, right before the pandemic started and it was supposed to come out. So then the pandemic happened and my book publisher was like, the book publishing world is dying. Or I don't know, there was, everybody was stressed. It was a terrible time for everybody. And the book publishing industry was upside down. Right. So wow. that got delayed and it got delayed. So then it finally came out a year ago and, you know, it's, um, and I'm sorry that you didn't see it. Apparently I didn't put it all over enough. It did, it did do well. It's a USA Today bestselling book. So it's our best um, ever in terms of from mar a marketing perspective. Wow. And number one on Amazon and number one on Barnes and Noble, which had never had happened before. Wow. So I guess if you go back and look at my social media like a year ago, you'd probably find it. But anyway, nonetheless. I will stop um, you. Don't worry. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I have all your other books on my bookshelf. I mean, they're literally lined up. I've bought yeah. multiple copies of them to give out as prizes at events mm -hmm. and 
Seriously, I'm I'm your biggest fan. Just we'll have to, I know that. I will have Trisha send you one. I'm sorry we didn't do that ahead of time. No, no, no. I'll buy it. I'll just go online no. and I'll put the link in the comments so or the description of the show so people can get it. Yeah, and we'll get well. So and the whole point, the whole point of up level now is to make this is what it says on the cover. I want to make sure I get it right. Make the domino effect work for you and create more peace, freedom, and joy in your personal and professional life. And the whole idea, which I know we're gonna talk about today, and yeah. just uh, I want to know why you wrote this specific book because you've written five others. Right. And exactly. And what I found in all the things, like all the, oh my gosh, like I do feel old when I talk about my business and the almost two decades of time that I've been in business, what I found is when I was most successful is when things were moving, when I had momentum, when I was in the flow. And I think as business owners, it's so easy to fall out of that. And, and so the idea is just to start, to start with one thing, right? One thing in your business, in your case, for like in for those of you who hang out with Mary, it could be your marketing. And by the way, that's a good place to start when we're in business, right? Like, what can I change in our marketing to get that momentum going, to get something happening? Because that has a domino effect into the other areas of your life. And I find it has a domino effect into your personal life as well. Well, they say the object in motion stays in motion, right? Exactly. Yeah, you're quoting my book. Hey. You guys said that. Yeah. <laughs> Them. Please Somebody say. famous said that. I don't know who. A scientist. Somebody. Somebody super smart. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so how does this book differ than your other books? Yeah, this book I would say has it's it has a wider audience, right? Like even if you're not in business, you can pick this book up and get something out of it. But it was it was truly written for business owners, where the others were maybe more prescriptive, or this is for sales and this you know selling with intention was for sales, selling with oh. intention for sales. One great goal was for goal setting, right? The belief zone was for you know really working on your limiting beliefs. So this one was a little more general, but like how to get things moving, and I you know. When I look back right after the, you know, we we're starting to come out of the pandemic was the perfect time to launch it. Because I think a lot of people. You're ready. You're all feeling upside down, right. And backwards. And like, who am I? And by the way, for those business owners who were in business during the pandemic and you're still in business, give yourself a pat on the back. Cause not everybody made it. Not everybody made it, but you know who made it Mary it was the people who I, I will say this over and over again, the people who had plans for sure the people who are willing to do things differently, but also the people that had relationships, right? Like you and I connected during the pandemic. I can tell you that relationships from 20 years ago and people that you and I both know in California came out of the woodwork just to be like, how can I support you? And it was such, right. I missed that. Like it was such a great time of as business owners, how can we support each other? How can I keep yeah. you in business? How are you going to help me stay in business? Right. And so, you know, I look back nostalgically, but also it was a painful time that I hope we don't have to really live anytime yeah. soon. Yeah, exactly. One thing I'll be honest with you, um, I started a nonprofit um, called Flag Frontline Appreciation Group. So we were raising money to pay the restaurants, to deliver food to the frontline heroes. So police, fire, hospitals, senior homes, um, ambulance drivers. It was amazing because I felt so much joy because I work with a lot of schools. So I said, Hey, it, can you give extra credit? The kids are home anyways, to make signs of appreciation and we'll deliver those. So this, you know, the, the hospitals can be lined because nobody else could go in, be lined with po posters. that says, we love you. Thank you for, you know, going to work so we could stay home and all that kind of stuff. So I was getting these dropped off at my do doorstep every day, like these piles and piles of, so I, I mean, there was nothing but joy, even though, yeah. you know, I didn't want people to suffer, but, um, so I, I felt that, but you know what I was, you know, how we always say we, you said we're a little nostalgic for that. One thing that I regret not doing is like everyone I knew was like redoing, like reorganizing their kitchen and, you know, going through their closet because they had all this extra time. I'm like, what extra time? Yeah. I'm, I'm more busy now than I was before. Like, oh my God. I mean, which is a great, I don't mean to like, that same sounds like a side, you know, mumble, but anyways, mm -hmm. but. I do. I, I kind of wish I could go back and say, and I guess we all have a choice. We can all decide I'm going to take two weeks to have a staycation and I'm going to gut my closet and, you know, we can make that choice. We're not forced to do it. Right. Yeah. Here's one thing I would say though, since we're talking about team today, I would think who could do that for me. Right. I have no desire to go clean up my, I have no desire to do any of that. Like who could do that for me? But I get, I get it. Like I, we were busier than ever too. We literally burned my old company to the ground sales coach now burned to the ground. Like if you think about it, there's no sales coach now left. That's how you knew me. That's how our clients knew us. And I just got really clear that that was not how we were going to help people anymore. And so that's why really? I rebranded. And that's why Ursula Inc was born during that time, which oh. is now being branched off into other things. It's sort of like, that's the parent company now. And there's other pieces that you'll see entities coming out that will 
will step to the forefront this year. But it was, wow. um, yeah, it was like a phoenix rising, burn that sucker to the ground. And then we rebuilt the company so fast, faster than I could imag have imagined because of some of the things we're going to talk about today that, that can help small businesses grow. Okay, awesome. Well, that brings me to my next question. Um, what is the number one secret to goal setting that most people don't know? So obviously you had a goal to burn it to the ground and build it back <laughs> up. It's just so, there. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. The number and this again, like some of the things I'm going to share, I'm sure people are like, I've heard that before. And I get that. I've heard these things before too. The question is, am I applying it? The question of the, the realization of do I know something or not is like, is it working for me? So one of the right. things that the, I would say the biggest secret is around the area of clarity. And while we often think we're clear, I often find that our clients aren't crystal clear. So it's like, there's clarity, here's what I want. But then it's like, we need to dig in and get crystal clarity. So an example of that would be an easy example. And where we start with our clients is a revenue model. Okay. A lot of times we'll talk to somebody and they'll be like, yeah, I, you know, maybe they're at their first hundred thousand and they're like, I want to hit, I want to hit 200,000. Okay. And then I'll stop them and I'll be like, because I, I always can tell, like, it's not quite there. I'm like, what do you know? Like, what do you really want? And this is the piece, right? It's sort of like the difference between what I think I want and what your true heart's desire is. Like, I'm a big believer of dropping from your head into your heart. Like, what's my true heart's desire? What do I really need? How much revenue do I really need to come in to not only live the life that I want for my family, but also to fund that nonprofit in your case, right? To have the the amazing support from a team to do all the things we want to do for our clients. What's that real number? Because especially for women business owners, I know we're talking to, there's a lot of guilt and shame around asking for the amount of money that we want. So again, the number one secret to goal setting is you've got to be crystal clear. It can't just be here. It's got to be like, what is, what do I really want? And unfortunately, Mary, a lot of us either don't know because we haven't spent the time or we don't think we deserve it or we don't think it's for us. Wow. Wow. It's so powerful because, you know, I've been in business for, sorry to say, three decades, 34 years, and I'm only 35. So, you know. I'm 29. Yeah, exactly. That's our story and we're sticking to it. <laughs> but I have had to reinvent myself multiple times in those 34 years, pivot our business. Like right now, we're kind of in that mode because, you know, people are thinking differently. They're looking at things differently. And we've had to take our, I mean, again, we're always have done marketing, but how do I do it in a way that people are going to be like, oh, like you want them to lean in. And I've noticed that people have been so stressed out for so long. It's like their new norm and they have lost the ability to be creative yeah. or playful in their marketing. And so I'm launching into this whole new campaign of helping people find their inner child again, find a way to be more playful, enjoy their business. And so that's why I'm so excited we're talking about this today, because I think people, I think we we were so into the hustle for so long, like got to hustle, got to keep going, got to keep going. And I think now people are realizing that doesn't work. You know, hustling is just going to burn you out and make you want to give up and, and, you know, not choose to burn it to the ground, but it you know, end up burning ourselves into the ground. So yeah. um, I love that. So let me go to the next question that I have for you, because this all comes to limiting beliefs. And wow, that's really small. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. But um, how do limiting beliefs block us from growing our business? And is there an easy way to change a limiting belief? Yeah, this is one of my favorite questions. This is why I wrote the book, um, The Belief Zone, because so so once once you have clarity, once you say, OK, you're right, Ursula, I really don't want to just go from 100 to 200,000 a year. I want to go from 100,000 to 500,000 a year. And once you get clear on that, the next thing that pops up typically is a limiting belief or a story that you tell yourself about why you can't. And here's what I want everyone to know is that when you catch a limiting belief or when you catch that story, like you hear the story in your head or you're like, oh my gosh, well, I'm saying this to myself, to celebrate that, to really celebrate oh. it because that is that is the bridge to your next level or in our case, your up level. Okay, so let me give you an example. Oh. So we get this a lot. Like a lot of people who show up in our world, they're at maybe 200,000, 100 to 200,000, okay? Secretly, Maybe they haven't told anyone yet they want to be at a half a million. So when I ask them, it's like, all right, so what do you believe about reaching a half a million? And that's the question you want to ask yourself. What do, you, what do I believe about reaching whatever number I desire? And often there's so many things. Like it could be a limiting belief that uh, this is one I hear a lot. There's not enough. 
there's not enough, especially ideal clients for me to get there or clients that I want to work with, or especially for women, it's, I'm going to be working all the time. It goes back to that hustle. Like I'm going to be working 10 times as hard as I am now to reach that goal, right? Because there's this belief that I have to do it all myself. So the key, the whole thing is we, we've got to identify the limiting belief that's showing up. Now, once you do, it's very easy to shift a belief. And I've spent the last two decades figuring this out. So here's, here's my hack, because if there's anything I like about being an entrepreneur, it's like, there's ways to do things. If there's a way to shortcut something, I'm going to do it. Okay. So let's take the example of, uh, there's not enough. We hear that one a lot. There's just not enough ideal clients for me to hit this goal. The next thing you want to do, Mary, and your beautiful listening audience is to ask yourself, what are three things that are potentially not true about that limiting belief? Three things that are potentially not true. So let's say the idea of, of there's not enough. One thing that's not true is there's 8 billion plus people and counting on the planet right now. Like we can't even, we we can't fathom that amount of people. So there's more, like there's more than enough. There's so, there's so much opportunity. And we did this, Rebecca and I did this with a client one time, a client from St. Paul, Minnesota, who had this belief that there wasn't enough. And they were in a pretty specialized industry. But, you know, when we even took like um, a small quadrant of the St. Paul metro area in Minnesota for international listeners, that's a, um, a city in the state of Minnesota in the U.S., and even that little quadrant, even if they tried, even if they tried to service all the opportunity that was available in that tiny quadrant, they would never be able to do it unless they like built franchises or massively increase the size of their business. And that was just one little quadrant. So there, wow. there's just so much potential. Wow. Uh, the other thing that's not true is like other businesses are doing it. We all know, you all know competitors in your industry who you're like, well, oh, look at them. Right. But at the same time, you're like, oh my gosh, they're kind of killing it. Right. Like, or they, we think right. that, but there are, we know they're they're <laughs> if they've been in business long enough, like they're doing something right. Like they're doing well. Right. right? So other businesses are doing it. So you just keep doing this you can, until you get to those three things that are potentially not true. And okay. by the time you get there, it's clear that potentially what you've been saying to yourself isn't true. And the opportunity to get there exists around you right now. Wow. So it's and just it always does. This is the right. mind blowing part. Once you get there, the next steps to start to show up, like you'll, you'll get an opportunity that'll pop in or an idea. Here's the thing though, Mary, as humans, that thing that pops into our world is usually something we don't want to do. It usually means we're going to invest in our business. It might mean we have to become more visible. It might mean we have to pick up the phone. It might mean we have to talk to more people. Like it's usually something we don't want to do. And that's where we stop. Oh, my stars. Let me clutch my pearls. <laughs> Talk to people. Oh my gosh. Let's be fair. You're more extroverted than the rest of us, right? So maybe that's easier for No, so I, I know. I'm joking because it's it's true for me too. Because people always say, Oh my gosh, you're so good at that. I'm like, mm. okay. Thank you for that compliment. I will accept that compliment. But at the same time, we're all in that yeah. same place. Like we all think, oh, I don't want to annoy people. I don't want to bug them. I don't want to, but I've learned over the years, as you have, that we are the answer to someone's prayer. So if we're not putting it out there and offering it, even just as the opportunity to work with us, we're doing ourselves and our purpose a disservice because what if we're not there and someone really needs us? Yeah. You know, that's, I mean, you have to get to that gut guttural level that if I don't offer this, you know, I, and I, I'm, a, I'm a believer. So I'm like, God gave me this talent. And if I don't share it, that's like a, that's like a slap in his face. So I feel like, you know, it's our, it's a, important to know that. So yeah, I love that. So three things that are potentially not true. So is this like a journaling exercise that you have people go through? They just write mm -hmm. out what these things are? Yes. Yes. Okay. And very quickly you'll see, and if you can do it with a partner, it's even better to talk about it afterwards, because then you can say it out loud and you can see it, it just like your subconscious mind's like, yeah, that's not true. I see right. the potential for me too. Okay. That's awesome. Well, this kind of brings me to my next one, which again, this didn't, <laughs> this, the uh, thing on this is, is mushing up here, but is it possible to grow? So people tell me that too. Well, the economy's bad. And you know, the first thing that usually goes is marketing, right? So you think, you know, oh my gosh, if the economy's bad, like how am I going to survive? So is it possible to scale and grow your business in a yeah. difficult economy? Yeah. 
it, not only is it possible to grow and scale, but you could have your best years in business ever during a difficult, quote unquote, difficult economy. Because what does that even mean? So here, here's a couple of things, right? A lot of us survived, survived or even thrived through the last great recession. I was still in California. I remember uh, like a lot of us owned... A lot of us owned real estate at the time. We were playing, we were paying six mortgages in one month. So that's when I started teaching the three-day selling with intention intensive course. So back in the day, and it was a thousand dollars a person, which I I could have believed that no one had the money to pay it. But you know what? People showed up and God bless Michelle Skilgen, the Inland Empire Women's Business. I, say, I, they yeah, I remember money, that. Right? Yeah. They they donated space, they sponsored the space, and then I promoted, you know, their organization. We've had this phenomenal right. long-term relationship. But I, right. all that to say, like I launched that part of my business during like one of the most difficult times for sure in the industry, in my life, et cetera. And a lot of small businesses were were leaving at the time. I remember, I do remember this, <clears throat> that I had a lot of friends in BNI at the time. Shout out to BNI, Dr. Ivan Meisner. And they all had these buttons. I don't know if you remember this, that said, I'm not participating in the recession. Do you remember that? Yes. yes. And I thought that is so brilliant because it's a choice. So fast forward, if you made, here's the thing, if you made it and or thrived through the pandemic, I don't know that, I mean, I don't, I don't, you're always, I'm always afraid to say things out loud, right? Like, but I don't even know that a recession was as bad as the pandemic shutting businesses down. Like people literally couldn't do business and had to figure out how to do business. Like we had all of our live events planned for the rest of the year in, I said live in person. And right. we had to, of course, move to Zoom, which now doesn't seem like a big deal. Back then, it was a big deal. Not everyone even knew right. what Zoom was. And right. we all should have purchased stock in Zoom, by the way. But that's, you know, some 100%. Things. So, but I, I remember like, someone I met that actually started doing a how, how to use Zoom training yeah. class. Yes. She like, was making like 97 bucks a pop. And it was like, a, you know, some video, how to, where to click, where to put. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this girl's brilliant. Anyways, keep going. Yeah. So my point is like for us, that's when I was burning my other company to the ground, launching the new one. It, was, it could have been the worst time ever. It ended up being the best time ever. And our clients ended up having some of their best years ever in business. Why? Because we told them to stay right here. Get off, get off the internet. Stop watching the news. Stop being, what are you feeding your brain, right? right. Instead, right. feed your brain that this could be the best time ever to be in business. And so here's what's hilarious. I think like for the last year and a half, right? If you've been hearing any of the news or whatever, they're like, we're in a recession. We have, we're not in a recession. We're almost in a recession. Maybe we have high inflation for sure. Eggs cost a lot of money and that stinks for a lot of people. I get that. But I mean, has it affected business, especially small business when we can really pivot? No, this should be the best time ever to be in business. And I would really shift that belief. Like even if things get, I mean, we're going to be coming into an election year pretty soon. I don't know, who knows what that's going to be like. All I say is small business owners, like if you can stay focused on your goal, if you can stay focused on your revenue goal, if you can blast through the limiting belief that it's not a good time to be in business, put it aside and just focus on you, your business and serving your clients, right. you'll be fine. But you got to yeah. stay here. You can't be like listening to what everybody else is saying, all the negative stuff. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent agree. Stay in your lane, but at the same time, expand right? Because you might see an opportunity like that lady who taught people how to use Zoom. Obviously, that's short-lived. Everybody you know, knows how to do that now. But yeah, that's so I mean, I actually, enough. I want you to tell us um, a, a, a client success story because I know that you have, I mean, you've had a lot of success stories, but I also, because we're talking about scaling your business with a small team, what would be the yeah. number one secret wish, you know, that you can, at all entrepreneurs would know in scaling their business? Because I'm very interested in this myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, tying to the team so that it's, it's not a, it's not a big team. You do not need a large team to grow. So I'll give you an example. We have one client who grew from a thousand dollars a month. She had a product-based company to 3 million in annual sales. So yeah, multi, multi millions with zero W2 employees, maybe one contractor and a little bit of marketing help. If that she oh. worked from 10 to two every single day. And, you know, she's just a great example. I, I will say this though. I've had, I had another client years ago. This was years past before the pandemic, all the things. And she grew her company to 10 people. And it was about just under seven figures. She realized at some point she didn't need 10 people. And what she said to me was, it was more of like this goal of 
sort of an ego-based goal of like, I can't wait to have 10 people on my team. It's going to mean that we've made it. <clears throat> and what she realized, it was very expensive and she didn't need that many people. So then she really cut back. She laid a bunch of people off and realized that she could, she could still grow with a small team. And so especially I think for women business owners, there's this belief that you, like when we say team, we're talking about five or more people. Most of our clients who have seven figure businesses have one to two employees. And sometimes just, they're just contractors. And right. And, you know, it's a personal decision. Some for some, like we had one client who service based business had a lot of contractors. It made sense for her to move her three full time contractors to W2 because it was more cost effective for her company. That's not necessarily, not necessarily true for everyone. She was just heavier in the, the service space and needed people to deliver. Sure. So, again, like I just want to blast that belief that to scale the business that you need a big team, you don't. In right. fact, what you do need, and this is the other part of the secret, you need a small team that's very well trained. And in fact, like this is their dream job, which is very possible, like working for you is their dream job. And then it's about fine tuning your systems and processes so that the company can almost run itself. That's what you want to do, right? And so like when something, like whenever something's wonky in our company or something's off, my first question is, you know, is there, a, are we missing a process here? Like, is there something that needs to be put in place so that this doesn't keep happening? And usually there's a quick fix. And right. It's easy to go through that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I've over the years been growing my team, but they're all virtual now. I oh, mean, yeah. years ago we had the office and the cubicles and the network computers and all that kind of stuff. And now people actually prefer, if, and if they're really good at what they do, they're not just helping me, they're helping other people as well. And I know that they're laser focused on their skill and talent. And so I can, you know, get, I, it's more bang for my buck because I know that they're really good and they're doing, they're staying in their lane. Um, and they're helping me. So um, yeah, it is possible. And you also get to meet the most amazing people who bring their best to you um, when you have, have a team instead of doing it all yourself, for sure. Yeah, that's a really good point. Because I do think skill sets are more siloed today in terms of like this, they're doing this one thing really, really well for your company. And sometimes it makes sense to hire a company like yours, for example, that delivers a marketing service versus a person, right? So you also got to look at, do I need a vendor or you know a company to work with? Or could one person do this? Or one right. person who's maybe managing that relationship. Right. Right. Yeah. And and do you also, as part of your, and we didn't talk about this, so if you don't, that's fine. Do you have anything in your book that helps people learn how to systemize or create procedures for their business to help them, you know? A little bit. Yes. There's, um, I don't remember the exact chapter, but I do, we do talk a little bit about um, systematizing the business. It's not a ton um, and a little bit about team as well. So yeah, thanks for asking. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Cause I think that's the thing. Some people are like, okay, that's awesome. <laughs> but how do I do that? So that might be another book you could write is how to take, you know, you burn your business to the ground, you've built it back up. I'm sure you've documented it. it is and the so next, it's the next book. Yeah. It is the yeah. next book. Yeah. You've heard it here, people. You've heard it here first. <laughs> really how to, yes. How to scale. And, um, and here's a simple thing. Here's here. Like, I feel like everyone could have, a tip would be helpful on this. Yes. One of the exercises we do with our clients that Rebecca uh, Hall has brought, she's one of our master coaches that she brings to the team, is what we call walk the order. Okay. And it's like from start to finish, like when someone purchases something from the very beginning, right? And and what funnels did they come through? How did they find you to okay. the sale? And then where do they go after that? Because of course we want them to come back as a client. So it's like step by step. And within every single part of walking the order, what's what needs to be in place so that it's seamless right so that okay. it's just easy for that person to in other words how do you make it easy for people to buy from you how do you make it easy to deliver your product or service how do you make it easy so they stay with you how do you make it easy so they come back and those are the keys and the other test of that mary we have a client doing this right now actually the test of that is if i left for a month would my company still be successful and running and profitable so we have a client right now who's grown a very successful, almost seven figure business. And it took a long time to hire, it took a very long time to hire. It was kind of like doing all the things, doing all the things, finally hired a part-time person. Now it's going to hire a more full-time person so that the goal is by July, this person can, can leave for an entire month. So that's another way to reverse engineer, right? And to ask okay. yourself, what would need to be in place and who would need to be in place for me to leave for an entire month and so that my company would run itself, so essentially. I love that. Okay. So here's another journaling exercise. 
Yeah. Like going through everything. And something I learned also when I started hiring my VAs, um, I this wonderful woman, I don't know if you know her, Jen Laner. She has, it's a company called Front Row CEO. And she teaches people how to hire VAs mm. in a way that you, they're doing what you need to do and you can try and track it anyways. But the one thing that she suggested on the same note is every time you have to do something, turn on Loom or, or another screen sharing or screen recording software, but yeah. I like Loom. And she says, record what you do and kind of walk people through it. You don't have to be on screen, but you're like, okay, th then I do this, then I do this. This is how I send a newsletter. This is how I send a text, this is how whatever. And you're basically documenting it. Yes. And so when you do hire someone, you can go, okay, here's how I do these items. And all I do is watch the video and they can come back and ask you questions, but you're basically creating a system for your your vendors or your staff or whatever team. And I found that was so helpful. I'm like, oh, and then if I realize that if they found a new way of doing something or a better way of doing it, they could record a, a loom and say, hey, this is a new twist on what you've been doing. And so we can get better and better and better. Because I think we don't live in a silo. We need a team no. to help us up and level our Yes, that is for sure. Next level. It's one of the things to your point of we have team Speaking members of, document okay. everything. Yeah. Yeah. You said you have what? I'm so sorry. Oh, that's okay. Team members document everything like you were saying. So it's like, so it's so that if they left someday, then that's the question we ask them. It's like, if you left someday, would someone be able to step into your job? What would right. they have to know? What would have to be documented? I love that. Well, obviously everyone needs to buy this book up level now. And I love how you always have now in a lot because it used to be sales, right? Sales. Coach now. Sales yeah. coach sales coach now. now. Yep. Yeah. Why do you put now on everything? Such a great question because I think as entrepreneurs, we can be real, we can be such great procrastinators. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just there's a lot going on. A lot of us have a little bit ADD, ADHD, right? And shiny objects pull us. So what do I need to do now or today? And that's one of the things that, you know, we work with our clients on as well is to have an ongoing to-do list, not a journal. A lot of people write their to-dos in a journal and then they just get lost. I'm a big believer. I'll show you like their ARC. I love ARC folders, right? Because you can pull the paper out. And oh, I have the same thing. Yeah. My girlfriend, my twin Janice gave this to me years ago. I love it. And it's Aww. red, so I didn't lose it. So, um, but yeah, you pull the paper out. So at the, the beginning of every day, make sure you, you look at your list and you do a couple things. Either you pick out your genius things, like this is what I have to do, which for me is like this, being on a podcast, right? Leading my team, um, writing, you know, it's a, like a handful of things that are good for me to be doing. And then if it's, I look at my list and if it's like, delegate it, right? Someone else should be doing it or delete it because maybe no one should be doing this thing that's on my list. Maybe it doesn't make sense for the company anymore. So do it, delegate or delete it. End of the day, rewrite that list. Now, I one of my favorite books of all time, one of my favorite authors, favorite mentors, Brian Tracy wrote Eat That Frog, right? And we all laugh because it's like, Eat that frog. Frog. who yeah. doesn't love that book, right? Because he right. basically says, you got to do the things that you don't want to do first, right? So look at that list and say to yourself, like, Oh my gosh, I totally don't want to do that. But I know it needs to get done. Like for me, sometimes that's writing marketing copy. I love doing it, but I just getting started is sometimes like, oh my gosh. So I give myself a little timer so I get it done. But just using a list, your productivity goes up 25%. You're like more likely to do it now. Do it, delegate it, or delete it. Now. now. I love that. So it's do it, delegate it, or delete it. Yeah. I love that. I love the D's. Triple D's. Triple D's. Triple D. Oh my goodness. Listen, I know you're a busy girl. You have things to do. You have a big thing tomorrow. You always have a big thing because you're amazing. And I'm so, so excited. And I know what's cool is, I mean, you left us here in California. So sad. But you like went to your family. You lived your best life. You're raising your beautiful boy. I mean, like near your family farm and you got to be with your mom and your family. I just love that you did that. You made a choice. You made a choice to live your best life, how you wanted to live it. And I think your business exploded. I mean, you were worried like it wouldn't because you had everything here in California. Can you leave us with that thought is, is how to, how to de decide to up level now and, and that you can work anywhere. Do you have any like advice in regards of how you did that? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Thanks for recognizing that. Cause it was so, it was a hard, it was tough. Like. We had a life in California and yeah. at the same time, once we had our son, we're like, okay. And also there was an earthquake. I do remember that. Like, I remember stuff like, it was a time when there was a little bit yeah. of an earthquake and Luca was a baby, tiny baby. And I thought, I don't, I can't do this anymore. So um, it rang the bell a little bit, but 
we did make a decision. And I remember someone telling me, someone said to me, they're like, you know, you're not going to have the same business there that you have here in California. Like you're just, you're, you're meant to be in California. And I was like, yeah, well, I'm not anymore. So I have to, I'm going, but I, I did make the decision. And in some ways, Mary, that was like someone lighting a fire under my butt to say you can't. So I was like, okay, that's great. I need a little bit of a challenge. And thanks to the move and really also the pandemic, I have to say, you know, there's always good in the darkness, the, the good that sh really shined through for me. I mean, it was God's hand. I will tell you, there's such a story of God pushing us. Like it wasn't even a question anymore. It was like, get your butts back to Minnesota. I was like, okay, I'm listening. Right. Um, and because of that, we were so blessed. In fact, I, I know I remember it was actually Joel Osteen, um, who I ran into in person. I don't know if you know the story, but it's in the belief zone. Janice okay. and I were out to dinner one night. Our, my twin, my good friend, Janice, we were out to dinner one night in Laguna Beach. And we ran into Joel Osteen and I just had been listening to him. He'd been in my heart a lot. And um, one of the things he talked about, it was before he moved, he, he talked a lot about, um, and you probably know better than I do, but I don't want to mess this up. But there's a verse in the Bible that talks about, there's a place that you will be blessed, a mm -hmm. place that you're supposed to be, right? And right. for us, it was Minnesota. And I took so much peace in that because I, I said that to Tim. I'm like, we were supposed, I knew we were going to be blessed in Minnesota. We've been blessed beyond belief. And so that's what I want to share with everyone there's probably a place that you're being called to. And maybe it's exactly where you are right now and you're being blessed. But if you feel like you're getting a little bit of that push, you're probably being called somewhere else where you will be, you will feel more grounded. You will be blessed in ways you can't even imagine. So that's, I think that's what I'll be with. I love that. And it doesn't have to be a physical place. No, right. It might be being pushed to open a new line of, line of products or services or programs or something that you... If when and I always say that too, like Lord, if this is not what you want, close that door yes. and open a window that I can jump out of. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> With a soft landing, please. Exactly, big mattress down below. But it's true. Like I think a lot of times, like throughout my business life, there's been a lot of times where doors kept shutting, and I was like, "What the heck?" You know. And then all of a sudden, on the other side of it, you look back and go, "Oh, that's why." Oh, and so you just have to kind of go with it. And I'm so proud of you for taking that leading and taking the leap to making your business because you know why you can bless more people now Yeah, because you have built something that now can help more people. So again, I'm going to be putting, um, so to, oh, something that uh, your assistant sent me that you wanted to share your, to our listening audience, yes. there was a, a gift that you had to share with us. Yes. Um, the quantum revenue expansion masterclass. It's a three part course of three hours. And I know Mary, you'll be sharing the link with them. I and it's, it's an opportunity for you to do three things. One, get really clear on your new revenue model, which we talked about today, then okay. get clarity on your, like what you need to shift with your packages and your pricing. And, you know, we tie a little bit into even your marketing, like how do you expand your marketing? How do you hire a company like Mary's, right? To really help you see where to go next with your marketing. And then the last part of the class is all about collapsing time. If you could get there faster, what would that look like? So we talk about how to really speed it up um, to achieve your goals in record time. I love that. So I'm going to put on here, this is your free gift. And that was so generous of you. Thank you so much. Um, so this is what I will be putting into uh, the comments that you have, have a link and you can get this. And I love that. Thank you, Ursula. That is so awesome. And I know that'll help our listening audience um, get to their big, their next level um, besides buying your book, which, you know, I'm excited about. So thank you. Yay. All thank right. You my for me, Mary, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here. And we'll definitely have to catch up and do like a wine zoom call or something. Or I would love that. Let's do it. That'd be super fun. All right. So thank you again, everyone. Make sure you tune in every Thursday at 2 at 1230 p.m. for the next Brilliant Marketing with Mary show. And until then, I will say adieu. And thank you again for your time, Ursula. I love you. Mm, love you too. Thank you. Bye. All right, everybody. So thank you for joining us. Isn't Ursula absolutely amazing? I am just so blessed to call her a friend. Um, so we are going to... Um, end now. But again, I look forward to seeing you every Thursday. And if uh, you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. And if this content has helped you in any way, please sprinkle it among your community. I'd really appreciate that. And without further ado, we'll see you next week. Thank you.
Thank you for joining me today. You can learn more about me, my products, and services at anotherbrilliantidea.com because everyone needs another brilliant idea. Make sure to join me for another episode every Thursday at 12.30 p.m. Pacific or 2.30 Central on my globally recognized show, Brilliant Marketing with Mary.